College football is returning to video games after a decade-long hiatus, but what role will HBCUs play in the game and when? Oh, yeah, it's Locked On HBCU. Play my music. You are Locked On HBCU, your daily podcast covering HBCU sports. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, family? Welcome back to another episode of the Locked On HBCU Podcast, your number one daily one-stop shop for everything, HBCU Athletics, Monday through Friday, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And I, of course, am Darian Gray, a.k.a. the Mouth of the South, Texas Southern alum and former TSU Herald Sports editor and current contributing writer at USA Today Saints Wire. Thank you for going on this journey with me. Make it locked on HBCU, your first listen of the day every day. And remember, just because the mic cuts off does not mean that the journey is over. Just means it's time to follow me on Twitter at South Exclusives. Starts with an S and ends with an S. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. In in these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. And that's why LinkedIn Jobs wants to help you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions do apply. Thank you to Ken Clark of the 1400 team because we will wrap up looking at Tamika Reed's contract to Charlotte. And I come to the same takeaway, but I have a significantly different view. And that's thanks to him and the team. Prior to that, Terrence Howard is coming to North Carolina Central, man. And no, not that Terrence Howard, not the actor, but the defensive back from the University of Alabama. But we kick off today's episode with some fun. It's the offseason, really. The baseball tournament is coming up, but this is really getting into offseason talk, and we're getting into some more fun topics that I'm really enjoying bring to, bringing to you. But what is the future of HBCUs in NCAA football? in college football video games. Like, what is the the future of HBCUs in this? So, for those who don't know, maybe you've been living under a rock, you know, NCAA, EA Sports NCAA football is returning July 19th. EA Sports college football, man. Like, I'll I'll be honest with you. I don't really play video games. That's really not my cup of tea. It it was never something I was huge about, but it's, it's definitely not now. But this game makes me want to pick the controller back up. Seeing college football back on video game platforms make me want to go say, which one of my friends got a PS5? I ain't quite at the point where I buy a PS5 just to play this game. But which one of my friends has a PS5 so we can play this game? That's how it feels because around the time that that game stopped being made, which was, what, 2013, 2014, somewhere between 2013 and 2015. Yeah, somewhere around there, right? That's around the time that I stopped playing video games. Seriously, like, I wasn't buying video games and do like that. It was at that point that I started playing video games when other people pulled out the game. This means a lot, right? Like, this is something that is important. This is something that is a great moment for a lot of collegiate football fans, and I am one of those. So I'm very excited for this. However, this is locked on HBCU. So what does this do? For historically black colleges and universities. Nothing right now. As of right now, HBCUs are not in the game by EA Sports. The only way for you to be able to play as an HBCU is to create the team via their team builder, right? And here goes a little bit of a uh, a disclaimer that they gave on their website. Team builder content can be used in offline play now, in private dynasty modes, internet connection and EA account required. Applicable platform account may be required. Age restrictions may apply. Okay. All that really matters there is that first part. Team builder content can be used in offline gameplay in private dynasty mode. So if you're going to go online, you have to do a private dynasty. Um, Basically what that means, I think you can still go into the playoffs. You can still do everything. So you'll probably end up either A, getting with your friends and just deciding I want to be Texas Southern, or maybe you're going to get with a bunch of HBCU people, which is what I decide. I think that would be a good one to go with. So you can have a dynasty team with a bunch of maybe five HBCUs or four HBCUs, 
wow, they're not going to have the Pac-12 in this game. That's crazy. That's crazy, for real. But maybe you get four HBCU fans, or three of them plus you, and y'all put an HBCU in each conference. Or maybe you put two in each conference and see if y'all can make up the majority of the uh, of the 12 team playoff. Maybe you just go 12 HBCUs and see if y'all can all make the playoffs. Like, I think that that is still cool because I believe with Dynasty, even though it's private, it just means you have to be invited, right? You can't just go into a random Dynasty mode. Please forgive me, game heads, if I'm getting that wrong. But that was my interpretation of what I was able to read. That private, you would still have all of the features of a regular Dynasty. It's just more exclusive than just regular. Okay, that's what I'm thinking. But let me move on. One thing you won't be able to do is do Road to Glory. And I think that part really is tough because with the Road to Glory, naturally, I, that's me. That's what I like to do. I'm a simple guy. So when I go to 2K, I'm playing my player. When I'm going to uh, Madden, not nah, Madden, I do franchise. But I used to do a lot of Road to Glory in NCAA. You cannot go and be a running back at Texas Southern. You can form a Texas Southern team and have your running back be cold, but you cannot go make yourself a, excuse me, make yourself a running back at Texas Southern and just go through everything, get the highest man. Do, like you can't do all of that. But I'll tell you what, with Dynasty Mode, if you become elite enough, imagine being Alabama State and then taking a player from Alabama in the transfer portal that they wanted, right? Instead of them coming and taking your guy. Matter of fact, I, what I may do, nah, it's going to take too long to build up that team. I was going to say, if I was somebody like North Carolina a and I might go get Bashul too, right? Like, I might just be like, forget it. You know, Jackson State, I might I might go steal Shador back. Like, like just some stupid stuff like that. I'm going to go take the player that you took from me in real life, and I'm going to do it on the game. Something, something silly, but at the same time, at the same time, I'm trying to think of somebody else who, was, who left prominently. Oh, we'll get to a couple of North Carolina Central players. Or one, no, two. Who left? We'll get the two to the left. You know, give me Khalil Baker back. Give me Jason Chambers. But no, seriously, though, I think that this is fun. But what role will HBCUs have? Currently, currently, this is how I view it. If you want to play with an HBCU in EA Sports College Football, right now you have to build a team. But I do not believe, I'm on a, on a scale of one to ten, I'm probably around a six as far as confidence goes, that that will not be forever. At some point, they will add in FCS teams. It's a matter of, Will they bring in all FCS teams that will bring in all HBCUs? It will be some sort of DLC where you can come add that later on. I don't know. I have a feeling they may do select FCS schools, but that still doesn't rule it out for HBCUs. You probably won't be a part of that, but I do think that they'll do an HBCU pack. I do think that at some point you'll have an HBCU DLC pack if they're not involved in a greater FCS pack. And it may be a select few HBCUs, maybe all of them. That's something I'm not sure. Actually, I think that may be deciding what HBCUs, if I had like five or six, what HBCUs would it be? I think that might be an interesting topic. I don't know. Um, let me know if you think that'd be interesting. If you had to pick, right? And then we can make this all together. We can see the comments and we can do all of that. Um, what HBCUs would make a, a, an exclusive DLC pack via EA Sports. That that's a good question. I want you to answer that or tell me if you want that topic. I'm gonna do it unless somebody says mouth of the south, don't you freaking do it. And if y'all tell me don't do it, then I won't do it. But if nobody tells me don't do it, I'm gonna jump off that ledge. So that's what we're looking at right now. It's all FBS teams, but I think the FCS is on the way. Like I just want to know if it's gonna be all or some. So that's that's the kind of the uh that's kind of the where I'm ranking right now as far as HBCUs being in the game. Right now, you have to create a team. But I do not believe that at the end of 2024, I know that's late, the season to be over, but I think by the end of 2024, you see HBCUs in EA Sports College football. Now, as we push forward, let me tell you something, Mike. <laughs> we got Terrence Howard out of North Carolina Central, Mike. All right. And look, I, I can't help it. I'm going to throw a couple of Terrence Howard jokes in there. But in all seriousness, the Eagles just pulled in a safety or a defensive back, excuse me, and just in general, defensive back from the University of Alabama. And I want to break down how he fits within the team as we continue with Locked On HBCU. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. And LinkedIn Jobs is the number one place for all of my small business owners. If you are not using LinkedIn, 
I don't know what to do with you. And I've been telling you for years upon years now that you need to be using LinkedIn.com slash locked on college because you're over there or excuse me over there. You have 800 million people who are there on a weekly basis who are breaking down their resume. They've broken down their skill sets. They've broken down their experience and they broke it down how they can help your company. So if you're not doing that, I'm just going to assume you don't want to be helped. And like J. Cole said, don't save. She don't want to be saved. That's how I'm going to treat you. But if you want to be saved, you want to fill the void with the right person faster because 86% of small business owners find the right person for their team in 24 hours at LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. So you know exactly where to go. LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. As we continue rolling on today's episode of Locked on HBCU, I appreciate you for making this your first listen of the day every day. Second listen, that goes to Locked on Sports Today, the first of its kind, 24-7, all day, every day, sports network on YouTube, live, live, live. No matter when, you'll be able to catch something Locked on related. Terrence Howard is a North Carolina Central Eagle, a North Carolina Central Eagle. But don't let the lingo fool you. I'm going to throw a couple mains in there. If it flows, I'm going to throw a couple of reference in there. Hopefully it flows. Uh, I'm all about flow. I'm all about making it seem as natural as possible, but I'm not going to lie to you. Terrence Howard is a North Carolina Central man. <laughs> see, I can't even say, see, I want to be so funny, but I can't even get it. Terrence Howard is a North Carolina Central Eagle man. So um, <laughs> this is so stupid, but in all seriousness, in all seriousness, in all seriousness, I'll probably keep the main out because that sounded so dumb trying to beat Terrence Howard, but um this is a player who did make some headlines terrence howard is not the actor he's not the guy who's just on the joe rogan show talking about how his first memory was waking up in his mother's womb like this is not that guy now if he can play out of his how uh if he can play as out of his mind as terrence howard sounded in that clip north carolina central gonna be a very dangerous defense a very dangerous secondary but this defense will back out of alabama because I'll be interested to see how they how they treat them when they put them corner safety nickel. Like I, I don't want to put them in a in a in a box. Um, because what you were in high school, it doesn't always equate to what you'll be in college. So they may try to put some pounds on them. They try to slim them down. Like it's just it's just so many things. So I just prefer when we're talking about guys in the secondary to just call them defensive backs to be safe until they prove they are something else. Because he didn't play a snap. And he didn't play a snap at Alabama. So it's not as if he's coming in with a lot of ready-made potential or ready-made tape. It's not like I, I can look at what he did in college and say, oh, that's what he's going to do for real. I, I can't say that. But this is a player who had a lot of fanfare, a couple of headlines around him because he was racking up quite a few HBCU offers. I think he had one. He definitely he got his first one from Texas Southern. Then he got one from Southern, right, University. Uh, and I, I think the third one, I don't think he had a fourth one, but I think the third one and the final one for sure was North Carolina Central. That was on May 9th, less than a week later, he committed. So I know that there was some thoughts that maybe he would return home to the Houston area to play for Texas Southern. Uh, there's no real geographic tie to Baton Rouge and, uh, into, to uh, Southern, but to TSU, I think there was some thought that maybe he might do that, but Hey, he decided to go out there to North Carolina, and I can't blame him. I'm trying to get out there to North Carolina, too. Not for the school, but just in general. So I wasn't sold he was going to go to an HBCU. I wasn't sold he was going to make his uh, his commitment so, so early. But he did go, and he went to North Carolina Central. And for me, when you're looking at Howard, first off, he's no stranger to the area. There's no geographic tie to Baton Rouge, but there is a geographic tie to North Carolina Central. Because just like high school, he has the opportunity to end his career in that state. He went to a prep school in Charlotte. He went to high school for a long period of time. He started his high school career in Mo City, right? So in Missouri City, that's like not that far from uh, from Houston. So that's why it was believed that he may just go there because of that geographic tie. But at the same time, but at the same time, you have. North Carolina Central was coming off a year removed from an HBCU uh, uh, Legacy Bowl championship. The decorated career of Davius Richard just passed. You have a great head coach in Trey Oliver, right? Like these aren't things that are at Texas Southern. So I get it. 
I get it a thousand percent and I can't blame you at all. I cannot blame you at all. Now, when you go there, now when, when Terrence Howard goes to North Carolina Central, he didn't play at Alabama. So he has all four years of eligibility. If he wanted to, he could truly build an empire at there, out there at Central. But also, you're looking at the guys that they've lost. When you look at the players that North Carolina Central has lost, specifically in a secondary over this offseason, you have Brandon Codrington going to the league. You have Khalil Baker, Jason Chambers. They both entered the transfer portal and they departed. You're going to be in there trying to get four brothers to work together for the first time in the secondary. So now it's really a good opportunity for Terrence Howard to come in and you're hoping that he's here for the long haul. You don't want Howard to come in and be a war machine in your secondary for only a year, right? Like that's not exactly the route that you're looking for, but you are bringing in a guy whose ceiling was being recruited at Alabama. Now y'all know how I feel about ceilings in high school. What you did in high school does not necessarily translate to what you will be in college. However, it is a good starting point for discussion in knowing that your high school career Got you to Alabama, which means your ceiling was high because Alabama isn't bringing in scrub defensive backs. That's Nick Saban, right? Like, I know he's gone now, but that's Nick Saban. Everybody doesn't play as a freshman. Him not playing at the University of Alabama as a freshman is not something that should be taken away. One year, entered the portal, came to North Carolina Central, has four years at Central. You can have him for the long haul. He can be a secondary centerpiece. Right. A cornerstone centerpiece. Which one I want to use? A secondary cornerstone. A defensive backfield centerpiece. I like that. He can be a defense. He can be a centerpiece in your secondary because secondary already sounds bad. It's like, oh, why he can't be primary, even though we all know what I'm talking about. But anyway, the point is, when you're looking at the ceiling of somebody, when there's no college film, that's what I'm going to go by. I, high school, man, I played high school ball. And I'm going to tell you right now, I was solid. But any running back who could have, they ain't, wasn't no running back who could put me on the highlight tape. Let's just get that out the way. However, you see where I'm at today. And I did, I never say former player at Texas Southern. I say I wrote for the paper. I wasn't that good. I played in high school, played varsity. Like me being on some of my highlight tape ain't going to make them. Like I, I need to see you on the collegiate ranks. I need to see what you do as far as college goes. Uh, but yeah, so now we push forward. Speaking of college. Speaking of college, Tamika Reed is no longer at Jackson State. She switched colleges. She's over there at Charlotte. Let's break down her contract. Just a little bit of it, not a lot of it. That'll be at the end. And I also want to look at why Jackson State was fighting the losing battle. But I want to give the correct points on why as we continue with Locked On HBCU. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel, and FanDuel is the official sports book of the Locked On Podcast Network. Now, the Eastern Conference Finals have been set. The Boston Celtics versus the Indiana Pacers. As I'm recording this, I have not seen who the Dallas Mavericks will be facing in the first round of the Western Conference Finals, but I know they will be going on the road. Are we going to be looking at a European Western Conference Final between Jokic and Luka, or will we be seeing a battle for the potential faces of the NBA with Luka Doncic? Luka Doncic or Anthony freaking Edwards. I think this is a very exciting Western conference. And it's one that you should put money down on at fanduel.com slash locked on. Um, Tyrese Halliburton versus Jason Tatum should be fun. Um, Jalen Brown is in that mix. Drew Holiday is in that mix. Will Chris Stapps come back? Like all of these players are people you can put your money down on, whether that's points, assists, blocks, steals, uh, three pointers, uh, layups, first quarter points overall. Like, these are things that you can put money down on at FanDuel.com slash locked on. And if you're new to FanDuel, get $150 back in bonus bets with a winning $5 bet. As we're wrapping up today's episode of Locked on HBCU, I appreciate you for making this your first listen of the day every day, making it all the way to segment three. And I thank you two times for that. Thank you. Thank you. I read an article on Thursday night about Tamika Reed's contract with Charlotte and there was a statement in there that said her contract salary was doubled but I also saw a tweet in there probably before I read the article I seen a tweet from my man Ken Clark 1400 club right y'all show him some love the squad puts out great content and he said we're gonna speak on this we're gonna speak on this tonight 
or tomorrow night at that point. Um, so I checked it out. I watched, I listened, and I heard the things he had to say. I came to the same conclusion, but I have drastically different talking points than I originally had. Number one, that, that salary was not doubled. That salary was not doubled. Um, it was an inaccurate number in there, according to my team out there. Um, but also, even if it was, right, y'all, y'all seen that? Y'all seen that Dave Chappelle, uh, like kind of meme or whatever I seen on Instagram quite a bit, even if it was, you know, cause the truth of the matter is let's work with the logic that she was getting paid 135. According to Ken Clark and the team, she was getting paid 200. But let's work with the logic that she was getting paid 135. Who cares if that's not the contract that was on the table? And we already know what the contract is. Let's get that out the way. If we're saying that Tamika Reed was making $135,000 a year, which Ken Clark says was not the case, but let's work with it. If she was getting paid $135,000 a year, and she ended up getting 300000 right? So she went from one thirty five to 300000 Who cares if the offer on the table was 250000 Is that really a relevant point? Not to me. Not to me. Because the only thing I care about is Charlotte's new contract and Jackson State's new offer. In comparison, that's the only thing that matters. And Jackson State's new offer was $250,000 per year for a year. So that was a four-year, $1 million contract. I understand that Charlotte still had more money on the table. Jackson State was fighting a losing battle. Number one, they got outbid. Yes. But if we're talking about bidding, they went first. That was already a disadvantage. And this was probably the biggest thing that I took away from Ken Clark. This is probably the, the biggest thing I took away from KC because he brought it up. Hey, whoever was next, it happened to be Charlotte, but whoever was next, whoever was next now had the opportunity to say, I see what Jackson State gave you. I'll one up it. That's the biggest reason they're fighting a losing battle because you went first. You set the tone. But you also kind of set the bar for everybody else. You kind of set the, 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 uh, the template. I wouldn't even say you set the tone. You set the template. And because you set that template, everybody else know how to grab from it. Everybody knows what they should do. Oh, that's 250000 We're going to up that a little bit. We're going to move it up to 300000 And I'll be honest with you. I think that that was Jackson State's best offer. And it's a really good offer. That is a good enough offer to where if she didn't want to leave, she wouldn't have. She didn't even need to go seek out other people. She didn't. And from what I hear, there was an offer on the table before the season. She wanted to see her options. $250,000 a year is a solid contract. And if anybody's trying to perpetuate this Jackson State is broke, so they lost another head coach, I don't really like that because that's a good deal. That's a good deal that they offered her. And they had incentives. That's the other thing that changed it. Knowing that incentives were on the table when it wasn't written originally that they were, oh, well, this conversation changes immensely now. The whole direction of this conversation is different because 250000 without incentives and then 300000 300, with incentives, two completely different contracts. But 250 plus incentives, 300 plus incentives, I don't know what those are, but you're looking at a much closer gap. I, I have significantly different talking points. But the truth of it is, it all comes down to Jackson State being first. Jackson State put it on the table. I'm giving you four years, one million. So let's just say 250 a year. Let's just go with that. Jackson said, I'm giving you 250 a year. Anybody else she goes to, you go and say, they're giving me 250 a year. What you gonna do? And then assuming she comes back to Jackson State, are they gonna be able to do better? Because I think that's their best contract offer because Tamika Reed is not somebody you try to short. You obviously want to put out the best deal you could. Now, maybe you push and try to even it out. Then maybe the next team just says, all right, we're going to go up 25000 So let's say they even out the three hundred because that's what she gets now. All right, we're going to move it to three twenty five. dollars That's our final offer. When you're at an auction, pieces of art have multiple bidders. Multiple bidders. First person set the tone, $500,000. dollars dollars going once, going twice. Like, that's that what we see here. And trust me, in the coaching world, in the women's basketball coaching world, Tamika Reed is a piece of art. Ask Don Staley. Ask Coach Gino. Ask Kim Mulkey. They'll tell you this is a piece of art. And at the auction, 
you're going to see many people driving up the price. I don't think a bidding war works out, even though Jackson State had a really strong initial offer. I don't think that a bidding war is something that I would want them to be in. But here goes the second reason you're fighting a losing battle. It wasn't just her that was benefiting. It was not just her. And I guess it all really comes down to money. But Charlotte said, we're going to pay your assistance more. Oh, uh, they wrap that up. Wrap that up. I don't know if the assistants were getting any bonus there. I ain't hear that one at Jackson State. The assistants I get. I'm a family oriented man, right? So if you're doing something good for my folks, you good in my book. That's that's me. In matter of fact, it's gonna really endear me or endear you to me. And it's gonna make me respect you more to take care of my people because you might not need to do that. There's probably other schools who didn't offer to take care of her assistant staff, and she brought over her coaching staff. So now you're doing that. It gives an extra benefit. But let's say Jackson State matched. Okay, well, all that extra money that we gave them, we're going to decrease that rate. We're going to decrease that raise. We're going to put it on to you. And now, boom, they're going to. The money was there. They were willing to pay Tamika Reed more. They were willing to pay the assistant staff more. And if you did try to even out the Tamika Reed, they would just take some money over here, put it over there, and bada boom, bada bing, you can't compete with that thing. It's simple. It's simple. Jackson State was fighting a losing battle because they didn't know what they needed to fight against. Everybody else did. Everybody else did. And that's the huge difference. They were able to go in there and they went in there and said, this is what we can do. Not, oh, you need to compete with that. And you know what? What they could do was a phenomenal offer. It just didn't work out. So I appreciate you for making this your first listen. Oh, also, Tamika Reed, five years, $300,000 per year, uh, 114K in signing bonus and incentives, and she won't be evaluated until 2026. So they're going to give her two seasons, two seasons to really start changing up some stuff, and then they're going to start looking at what she does. So I think that's fair. It's a good amount of money. And like I said from the beginning, it just not from the beginning of today, but from the beginning a long time ago, it's a higher NCAA tournament ceiling. So money aside, I just I just think it's better for that part of it. So I appreciate you for making this your first listen of the day every day. On tomorrow's episode, I got some news about Davis Richard. You can see it on my timeline, but I'm going to come in and elaborate on why the news that I received changes a lot on how I view Davis Richard. But until then, on tomorrow's episode, take care. Stay blessed. Peace.